Welcome to the MDMTV.com Friday Show. I'm Molly Dutton with World News. Jewish schools and community centers across the nation are coping with another wave of bomb threats and the vandalizing of Jewish cemeteries. In a show of solidarity, a Muslim-led fundraiser in Missouri raised more than four times its goal of $20,000 to help restore the grave sites. A couple from Georgia have been sentenced to jail for riding with a group of people waving a Confederate flag and making armed threats against an African-American child's birthday party. Jose Torres was sentenced to 20 years in prison on three counts of aggravated assault. His girlfriend, Kayla Norton, was sentenced to 15 years, six months in prison on one count of making terroristic threats and one count of violation of the Georgia Street Gang and Terrorism Prevention Act. A French police sniper accidentally fired a shot during a speech by President Francois Hollande while he was dedicating a new section of railway. The bullet went through the canvas of the tent where the event was being held, passed through a waiter's thigh, and lodged in another person's calf. The injuries were not life-threatening. Sarah? Thanks, Molly. I'm Sarah with National News. President Trump gave his first address to joint session of Congress Tuesday. The speech lasted about an hour and was interrupted over 90 times by applause. The president opened his speech by recognizing Black History Month and then listed some of his young administration's achievements and goals, like strengthening the U.S. military, the economy, and restoring integrity and the rule of law at the borders. His goals included raising wages, creating jobs, stopping drugs at the border, not to mention building a great wall. Trump also repeated his refrain of repealing and replacing Obamacare, and he encouraged Republic Republicans and Democrats to work together to make health care optional while still ensuring access to all. Among others, Mr. Trump recognized Ryan Owens, a former U.S. Navy SEAL who was killed in the line of duty on January 29th. Owen's wife sat at the audience and became emotional as Trump sang his praises as a hero who died in the ill-advised raid in Yemen that ended up revealing little useful information. The president ended his speech by recapping a few of his goals and stating his hopes for the future. After the break, we will hear from Drew with local news. I'm Annie Rogers. I help families buy and sell homes in our local area. Montrose, Flushing, Clio, Bircheron, Frankenmuth, Burt, Chesnang, New Lothrop, and surrounding areas. You can call me at 989-820-4153 or find me on the web at www.annierogersrealty.com. A public forum was hosted in Montrose Wednesday night to hear community concerns on a proposal to construct a gated medical marijuana processing and growing facility. The proposition followed Tim Ratchev's presentation to secure a vacant 30-acre site on the west side of town. Local pastor Tim Hobson spoke eloquently against the plans, stating, This community would become known as a marijuana community. This is not what I want for the community I live in. Another resident, in favor of the proposition, said, this is an opportunity not only to benefit people that need medical marijuana, but to also benefit the city financially, and I, for one, am for it. While the motions were evident on both sides, more speakers at the event opposed the Industrial Cannabis Park. No decisions have yet been made, and the City Council is set to take this issue up again next month. The Saginaw Fire Department needs their application for an $800,000 SAFER grant approved by FEMA in order to keep 13 firefighters on the job. Lieutenant Jim Foreman of the Saginaw Fire Department said their numbers are already depleted, down to 13 firefighters citywide. He added, We're still taking the same number of calls, but we're responding with fewer people. Foreman dislikes the impact it would have on their response time in a city where over 80% of the fires involved are in occupied dwellings. After this short break, we'll hear from Melissa with an Oscars recap. Hamilton's RV Outlet the home of the Happy Camper is your source for great products, including Brookstone, Eagle, J Flight, Mobile Suites, and other travel line products. The friendly, professional staff will help you with easy, safe financing. Hamilton's RV Outlet is a full service RV dealer that can handle all of your service needs. Contact Hamilton's RV Outlet so they can help make your next recreational adventure begin. 
Thanks, Drew. The 2017 Oscars came and went with a bang this year. The two Price Waterhouse accountants, who were blamed for the embarrassing Best Picture mix-up, now known as Envelope Gate, won't be back at the Oscars. Presenters Faye Dunaway and Warren Betty were handed the wrong envelope as they walked on stage and announced La La Land as the winner of, for Best Picture instead of Moonlight, which left crew members backstage scrambling. Absolutely the most memorable mistake ever at the Oscars. There were some notable wins at the Academy Awards, though. Casey Affleck took Best Actor Prize, Emma Stone carried home the Best Female Lead Actor Award, and Dan Damon Chazelle tallied a win for Best Director for Moonlight. Jessica Biel was number one on the red carpet this year, wowing us once again. Another look that stood out was Haley Steinfeld, who she truly stole the show. Moana star Aloui Kravlaho was struck on the head during her Oscars performance while singing Oscar-nominated How Far I'll Go. She experienced an unexpected gaffe on, the, on stage, appearing to get hit in the head with a flag-like stage prop. Karav Laho had just finished singing the lyrics What's Wrong With Me before seemingly getting brushed in the dome. Despite the mishap, the actress kept singing and still killed it. There's no telling how far she'll go. David? I'm David Sackrider with today's Tech Minute. Maverick inventor and industrialist Elon Musk recently unveiled plans to revolutionize California's legendary snarled urban traffic. His solution? Tunnels. Musk is using a model of German tunnel boring machine he dubbed the Nanny. The Nanny has a huge drill bore on the front, like you would expect, but the back pulls the mud out of the hole and replaces it with concrete tubing that supports the tunnel. Musk believes that his solution is better than flying cars which are currently under, under development. This isn't Musk's first revolutionary idea. Musk is the founder and CEO of both Tesla, the electric car company, and SpaceX. SpaceX is Musk's private space travel company where he has been doing some interesting work. He is currently trying to fund commercial tourist trips to the moon, and SpaceX also helps to supply the International Space Station. One of Musk's biggest goals is to send people to Mars with the eventual goal of colonizing the red planet. Combine this with his work at the Boring Company, the tunnel drilling company, and Tesla, and Elon Musk is working to revolutionize the universe we live in one step at a time. After the break, we'll hear from Eric with sports. Mike Young Buick GMC invites you to discover the Mike Young difference. Located in historic Frankenmuth, Michigan, the Mike Young Buick GMC difference begins with great customer service. Whether you are purchasing or leasing your next vehicle, our staff is prepared to help you each step of the way with financing and more to accomplish your goal. Among the other products and services provided by Mike Young Buick GMC are over 100 used vehicles. A wide array of service departments including a full auto body service department for any make or model. And loaner cars as well. Be sure to check out the Mike Young Buick GMC website to view our inventory, service specials, and customer reviews. Whether it is helping you finance the automobile of your dreams or providing great customer care after your purchase, Mike Young Buick GMC of Frankenmuth prides itself in the Mike Young difference. Welcome back to the Friday Show. I'm Eric Vandepfeiffer with Sports. March is upon us, and with March comes March Madness, or tournament time. But first, the teams have to finish the regular season. The Montrose Lady Rams basketball season came to an end on Monday night with a 63-15 loss to the Bendel Tigers in the pre-district game. The Lady Rams finished this season 5-16 and, and head coach D'Amico Smith's debut season. The Rams boys team extended their record to 10-9 in the final week of the regular season with a win over Mount Morris on Monday, or Tuesday night, rather me, 39-34. Since starting the season 8-3, and three, the Rams have won just two of their last eight games with the last season of their, with their last week of the regular season upon us tonight. With Genesee, the last game, that game can be seen live right here on MDMTV.com. The Rams Montreal's wrestling team will send four wrestlers to the Palace of Auburn Hills this weekend for individual state finals. Reese Wallace at the 125-pound weight class, Bradley Payne at 140, Richie Wallace at 145, and freshman Griffin Barnett at heavyweight. In college, after picking up a huge win over Wisconsin, both Michigan and Michigan State fell 
to a couple of Big Ten foes this week. The Wolverines were first on deck Wednesday night playing in Chicago against Northwestern. With the game tied at 65 and 1.7 seconds left, Nathan Tafforn threw a 92-foot heave to Derek Pardon for a layup at the buzzer to beat the Wolverines and most likely lock up a tournament berth for the Wildcats. Michigan State traveled to Champaign on Wednesday night to face the Fighting Illini. Miles Bridges poured in 22 points and hauled in 10 rebounds, but the freshman's double-double was not enough for the Spartans, who fell by a final score of 73-70. to Hanging on to the ball was one of the biggest challenges for the Spartans as they turned the ball over 15 times. Both Michigan and MSU will play their final games this weekend, State at Maryland on Saturday and Michigan at Nebraska on Sunday. On the March Madness front, most conference tournaments get underway next week, but there are a few that start tonight, including the Horizon League Tournament at Joe Louis Arena. MDM TV has a team going down to Hockey Town for the tournament, and we will have a report on next week's show. The nation's number one overall team, Kansas, won their 13th regular season Big 12 title this season and will likely have the number one seed in the Big 12 tournament. But there is one team and especially one individual who would like to spoil the Big 12 championship and number one overall seed for Kansas. It's the same team and same player who have done just that in back-to-back -back season. That team, Iowa State, and that player, Flint Beecher native, Monte Morris. The two-time the two high school state champion, Mr. Basketball for the state of Michigan, is on fire this season. The senior has been regarded as the nation's best point guard for almost two seasons in a row. Morris has led the nation in assist to turnover ratio the last two seasons and has a very controlling lead this season with a 6-1 to one ratio. Senior year is almost over for the Flint native and he is more determined than ever. With Iowa State and Morris playing their best basketball at this time of the year, they are definitely a team to look out for in March. The Detroit Pistons lost the New Orleans Pelicans 109-86. Andre Drummond's 13 points and 17 rebounds was nothing compared to Anthony Davis's 33 and 13. The Pistons will play the struggling Philadelphia 76ers on Saturday evening. The Wings will play tonight against the Calgary Flames. The farewell season at Joe Louis will likely end with the conclusion of one of hockey's longest streaks. With just a month left in the season, the Wings find themselves nine points out of a wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. Failure to make the playoffs this season will result and the ending of a 26-year streak of making the playoffs for the Red Wings. The baseball season is back with spring training underway. The Tigers missed out on the postseason last year, but with the signing of a new few young prospects in the offseason, they will look to make a good push into October this season. Again, I'm Eric with Sports, and this is your MDMTV.com Friday show. We'll see you right back here next week.